Hello and welcome, this is Alex Vizina, and today I demonstrate how you can use the Smart Editor widget in ArcGIS Web App Builder to collect location information such as addresses and coordinates while editing data. This video is part of the video series Get Smart About Editing. Stay tuned as more videos are made available periodically. So in our two examples today, I will use one of my favorite capabilities in Smart Editor attribute actions. I will use the address and coordinates attribute actions capabilities to enrich my data with location information. In the first example that you can see here on the left, I am collecting data for a shelter locator application, which will help me inform my community on the location and status of emergency shelters activated during an incident or event. In the second example on the right, I am using an application to gather information about a road closure to share it with the public. At the end, I will use this road closure example to take a closer look at the Smart Editor widget configuration for the address and coordinate attribute actions. This first example uses a configuration of the Shelter Locator application that you will find in the solution available on the ArcGIS Solutions website. If you haven't yet had a chance, I recommend you check out the solution for your own implementation. So I've configured my application for editing purposes, and we'll first use the Smart Editor widget to append shelter data into my Emergency Shelters Points layer. The city of Yucaipa in California has shared evacuation notices with its residents due to the El Dorado fire, which started on September 5th, 2020, around 12.50 in the afternoon. The residents are prompted to evacuate to one of the nearest shelter locations where assistance can be provided to those in need. First, I need to make sure I have an application which provides information about all the available shelter locations. As you can see here, there is currently no shelter data in the emergency shelters layer in my app. To remedy this, I will get information from FEMA's National Shelter System Database. I have already added their feature service to my map and will use a smart editor to copy from the official database into my own emergency shelters layer. For more information on using the copy function in the smart editor, check out the combining copy data video. Now, what we are interested in today is what information is shown in the shelter attributes once the points are copied into my emergency shelters layer. I have configured the Smart Editor widget to automatically populate the attributes for these points with the address and the latitude and longitude coordinates. As you can see, the information is now shown in the pop-up for those fields. The key takeaway for this example is that attribute actions are not only triggered when creating a single feature, but also when you copy multiple features at once into a target layer which has attribute actions configured. The other information you can see in this pop-up was automatically appended from the source database when copying the data since my field names were the same. With these steps, I was quickly able to copy shelters from FEMA's National Shelter System database into my emergency shelters layer. And I can now update the status to open for the shelters that are currently offering services during the El Dorado fire incident. I can then share a public application with the Near Me widget to inform the public on the open shelter closest to them. Now let's take a look at another example using the address and coordinates attribute action. This example uses a configuration of the road closures application from the solution available on the ArcGIS Solutions website. Again, check out the solution for your own implementation. A street needs to be closed while a utility tears up the pavement to perform repairs. And while roadblocks need to be put in place on each end of that street, the information also needs to be updated in the road closures application. So an application is being shared publicly so residents can view which roads are closed in their area that may affect their daily travels. I have an application for editing 
where I can add and update road closure information. Using the Smart Editor widget, I can add a new roadblock point at the end of Rue Jeanne Mans, where it intersects with Milton. When I add this point, I can see the address for that location is automatically added to the street name field. I can start filling out the other information for that roadblock. Conveniently, the location coordinates were also populated when I created a point using the military grid reference system. I save this point and can now add another one at the other end at the intersection of Prince Archer West. Again, I can see the street name and the coordinates were both filled out right away and I can quickly fill out the other attributes. Now after reading the report again, I just realized I've actually placed these roadblocks on the wrong street. These should be placed along Avenue du Parc instead. I can quickly grab and move one of the points. Now you can see that the address and coordinate information is updated right away for that new location. The same thing happens when I move the other point. I can finally add the road closure line to indicate disclosure affects traffic in both directions. When creating a line feature, the address and coordinate information is taken from the starting point of the line. So let's take a look at the configuration of the Smart Editor widget for this application to better understand how you can set up these address and coordinate attribute actions. For this workflow, I have added the Smart Editor widget to my application. In the configuration, I need to make sure the roadblocks and road closure layers are editable. Then from the Attribute Actions tab, I click Add New in the Address section. I give my new Address Attribute Action a group name, which I can quickly recognize if I need to update the configuration. So it could simply be address. Then I select an attribute. The options shown in this dropdown depend on your geocoder settings, which you can change from the general settings. A default geocoder service is provided by Esri, but your organization may also be using their own, which would display here. If you're using the geocoder provided by Esri, you will see a question mark for accessing the documentation related to every option provided in the dropdown. Note that some of these options may return a blank result when creating a new feature in a location that does not have any related data. So for now, let's choose Match Address, which will provide the full address, and expand all layers to view field options. In the search, type Address, and then check the box for Select All Fields. Once I save this configuration, the matching address will be written into the fields with the address information for all new roadblocks and road closures I create. Next, I create a coordinates attribute action. I give it a name, and here I can select a reference system, which could be using the spatial reference from my map, lat, long, or the military grid reference system, or MGRS. For this example, I choose MGRS. Again, I select which fields I'd like to write coordinates into. I can type to find the coordinates fields, select them, and click OK. Now that I've configured the address and coordinate attribute actions, let's move to the General Settings tab. Here, I will configure the options to enable geometry edits by default and the capability to update my address and coordinates attribute actions when that geometry is updated. Under Geometry Settings, I check the box for Enable Geometry Edit by Default. This will allow me to move any features I've created. But note here, if the geometry editing is disabled for a layer from the Layer Settings tab, you will not be able to move its features, even if this option is enabled in the General Settings. Under Action Settings, I check the box for Show Attribute Actions Update button. This option allows you to manually update the attribute action for a feature by the simple click of a button. But since our attribute actions are location-based, 
We want these to update as soon as the geometry for that feature is moved. So we also check the box for automatically call attribute actions after geometry update. When I'm done with the widget configuration, I click OK and save my application. So this ends our session on address and coordinates attribute actions for reverse geocoding on the fly. Are you enjoying the Smart Editor widget? What do you think of this video series? Please take a few moments to share your feedback with us. Help us provide the tools and information you need so that we can help you be successful. Scan the code on your screen or type in that URL and fill out the survey. Thank you for watching and see you next time.